Assemblies of God is the world's largest Pentecostal denomination. Founded in the U.S. in 1914, it has amassed a global footprint, leading to a world fellowship forming in 1988. The history around the founding of the Assemblies of God can be seen in this video here on Ready to Harvest, Church Splits, Church of God in Christ, and Assemblies of God. On major doctrines, the AG affirms monotheism and the deity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in their second fundamental truth. This is followed with a detailed and precise defense of the doctrine of the Trinity, particularly relevant as the AG has in the past had separation from Pentecostal groups that deny the Trinity. In the third fundamental truth, Christ's virgin birth, sinless life, miracles, death, and resurrection are also affirmed. There is a literal hell and final judgment. There are two ordinances in AG churches, baptism and the Lord's Supper. Baptism is by immersion and only for those who have repented and believed, that is, not infants. There is no practice of confirmation. The Lord's Supper is viewed as a memorial. The typical element of the cup is unfermented grape juice. Frequency of communion varies from congregation to congregation. In most AG churches, open communion is practiced. Anyone present who is a believer is invited to participate. However, there is no official requirement worldwide, so there are some churches that have restrictions. The Bible is the 66-book canon of Old and New Testaments. As stated in the Fundamental Truths, the Bible is viewed as verbally inspired and infallible. In a position paper, the AG affirms that the Bible is inerrant in the original manuscripts and accepts textual criticism in determining the text. On creation, Adam and Eve are affirmed as real historical persons, and humans are said not to be formed from a previously existing creature. Any evolutionary theory, including theistic evolution, evolutionary creationism that claims all forms of life arose from a common ancestry is thereby ruled out. Previous statements on creation on the AG website were more explicitly in favor of literal seven-day creation than what is now there, such as their old article on creationism, which said that the most natural reading of the creation account is to place it in parallel with a seven-day week. In the spring 2010 Enrichment Journal, it was stated that 35% of faculty and students at Assemblies of God institutions of higher learning embrace young earth creation, 31% embrace old earth creation, and 16% embrace theistic evolution or evolutionary creation. The article suggests regarding these camps, so-called, the attitude in essentials unity, in non-essentials liberty, in all things love. The AG website affirms original sin and the human sin nature. On salvation, assemblies of God teach a necessary born-again experience. The fifth fundamental truth says of salvation, man's only hope of redemption is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Conditions to salvation? Salvation is received through repentance toward God and faith toward the Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, being justified by grace through faith, man becomes an heir of God according to the hope of eternal life. The church practices and encourages evangelism to convert unbelievers and lists evangelization of the world as one of the fourfold purposes of ministry. The AG position is Arminian and not Calvinist. In a position paper on assurance of salvation, the view of limited atonement, for example, is criticized. The AG teaches against the view that it is impossible for a person once saved to be lost, saying that it is possible to fall away and that the security of the believer depends on a living relationship with Christ. They have However, say they reject eternal insecurity or the idea that a person's salvation is always at risk. The believer's salvation is secure with Christ but can be abandoned by willful choice. The AG's Statement of Fundamental Truths contains a point on sanctification, which presents a progressive sanctification view, not that there is a sanctification event or that a person can be entirely sanctified in this life. As a classic Pentecostal denomination, AG churches teach a baptism in the Holy Spirit experience, distinct from and subsequent to salvation. The so-called initial evidence doctrine is taught as a fundamental truth. Baptism with the Holy Spirit is always evidenced by speaking in tongues. Beyond the initial evidence of spirit baptism, the AG teaches that other purposes of tongues are as a gift to edify the church, as a sign for unbelievers, and for use in prayer and praise. Other things that the AG has said about the gift of tongues in their Speaking in Tongues FAQ is that speaking in tongues in a public assembly must be accompanied with an interpretation, that a person speaking in tongues should either provide the interpretation themselves or be assured that someone else will. Will. Proper interpretations are Holy Spirit inspired and will not contradict the Bible. Tongues are not to be emphasized over the new birth or water baptism. The AG's 12th fundamental truth says that divine healing is an integral part of the gospel. Deliverance from sickness is provided for in the atonement and is the privilege of all believers. 
On Prophets and Prophecy, the Church's position paper on Apostles and Prophets says there is no provision for qualifying or appointing prophets as a part of a church leadership hierarchy for succeeding generations, but says that the gift of prophecy is still available and that the church should long for authentic prophecy. On Apostles, the paper says, since the New Testament does not provide guidance for the appointment of future apostles, such contemporary offices are not essential to the health and growth of the church nor its apostolic nature. While we do not understand it to be necessary, some church bodies may in good faith and careful biblical definition choose to name certain leaders apostles. At the same time, the paper teaches against apostolic succession. In the AG position paper on end times revival, it is said, though we dare not inadvertently quench the Spirit's work in changing lives and calling the church back to its first love and passion, we must speak out with words of caution when departure from scripture threatens the ongoing life and stability of local churches. We find cause for concern in the following areas. The areas warned about include bestowing or naming spiritual gifts by laying on of hands until it is confirmed by the Holy Spirit through a supernatural manifestation, that apostles and prophets should govern church ministry at all levels, recklessly giving personal prophecies or personal advice, resting and distorting scripture through interpretations that are in opposition to the primary meaning of biblical passages. In that case, the AG says, the following teachings all have an element of truth in them, but as currently taught, they are plagued with misleading and unbiblical elements and should be carefully avoided. And then names Kingdom Now or Dominion Theology, Manifest Sons of God and Joel's Army, Spiritualizing Biblical Events and History, The Prosperity Gospel, Birthing, and Generational Curses. The AG also warns about excessive fixation on Satan and demonic spirits. In the same position paper, the AG also says, Some people defend strange physical responses as the irresistible power of the Holy Spirit at work. However, that is often a fleshly response to the consciousness that God is present. Discernment is absolutely essential. Correction of such abuses should be appropriately handled. At the end of the position paper, they also state, Reports of souls saved and lives changed should never justify wrong theology and practices. The AG also has a position paper on positive confession, which it explains in this way. According to this position, what a person says determines what he will receive and what he will become. Thus, people are instructed to start confessing, even though what they want may not have been realized. If a person wants money, he is to confess he has it, even if it is not true. If a person wants healing, he is to confess it, even though it is obvious not the case. People are told they can have whatever they say, and for this reason great significance is attached to the spoken word. It is claimed the spoken word, if repeated often enough, will eventually result in faith which procures the desired blessing. In part of the position paper which challenges this theology, the AG says, getting what the believer wants is not as simple as repeating a positive confession. Pleasant things might be out of the will of God, and conversely, unpleasant things might be in the will of God. It is important for the believer to say, as Paul's friends did, the will of the Lord be done, Acts 21 verse 14, more importantly than to demand a life free from suffering. Additionally, the AG warns about confusing emotional and mental illness with demonic activity and recommends the wise counsel of doctors, counselors, and psychologists to discern the condition. On eschatology, one of the fundamental truths on the millennial reign of Christ shows the AG position as being premillennial with a literal rapture, and the AG has as part of their end times theology the literal salvation of national Israel. An article in the Pentecostal Evangel and also on the AG website says that the common AG position is a pre-tribulation rapture and the second coming is after the tribulation. The AG position paper on divorce and remarriage says that marriage is to be heterosexual, that homosexuality and lesbianism is sinful, and that no homosexual union can be termed marriage. The AG states that marriage is intended to be a permanent union, and that divorce is treachery against one's companion. They state that Jesus permitted divorce for marital unfaithfulness, that is, habitual sexual immorality, including adultery. Abandonment or divorce prior to conversion are other exceptions. Remarriage is permitted Committed, but only if there was biblical cause for divorce. Elders in the Assemblies of God must not have been remarried or married to a spouse previously divorced unless the divorces were for biblical reasons. The AG position on abortion is that it is evil and morally unacceptable. 
They officially do not have a stance on contraception, but caution against methods regarded as contraception that cause abortion. The AG is opposed to reproductive cloning. They believe adult stem cell research should proceed, but embryonic stem cell research should be prohibited. The AG also opposes the right to die movement and assisted suicide and euthanasia. Assemblies of God don't have a requirement that churches have a certain worship style, so there is some variety. In their position paper on worship in the Bible, they recognize that there has been disruption among their churches where churches have had issues over the question of which type of music to use. However, they clarify that traditional, contemporary, or blended worship styles may all be appropriate or inappropriate depending on the time and place. The AG teaches complete abstinence from alcohol. On tithing, the AG website says scripture is clear that Christians should tithe on their income as an act of obedience and a recognition that all of our resources are given to us by God. The AG is not pacifist, but deplores war and is committed to its avoidance and insists on the right of members to choose whether to be in times of war combatants, non-combatants, or conscientious objectors. Though not an absolute, most AG churches have congregational polity. The congregation elects a lead pastor and church board. Some AG churches have a multi-site model or church government with a greater amount of authority vested in a group of elders. As the AG states, the Assemblies of God recognizes ministers as certified, licensed, or ordained. The work of district councils and the general council is overseen by presbyters and superintendents. Local churches appoint deacons. Churches also have ministry teams of volunteer and paid members. Some in the ministry team may have ministerial credentials. Women in the AG are eligible to serve in all levels of ministry. The World Assemblies of God Fellowship is a fellowship of politically autonomous denominations, over 144 of them. Together, there are over 375,000 congregations and 69 million members worldwide. Assemblies of God USA has around 13,000 congregations and 3.2 million adherents, of which 1,856,000 are members. It is a member of the National Association of Evangelicals, Pentecostal Charismatic Churches of North America, Pentecostal World Fellowship, and Wesleyan Holiness Connection. For other denomination videos like this one, view the Pentecostal playlist here on the Ready to Harvest channel. Look around the channel for videos on all types of Christian denominations.